I think for many of us, there have been moments in our lives we wish we could control or change, if only to see how things would have turned out differently for us had we done so. Beacon Pines is a story about change, a cute and creepy story written onto the pages of a shifting chronicle, a warm voice inviting you to reconstruct its narrative and reach its true conclusion. Can you write and rewrite this tale to uncover the mysteries that a small, sleepy town is hiding, and are those mysteries worth unearthing in the first place? Beacon Pines takes place within a storybook, and you play as both its reader and as its protagonist, a young boy named Luca Van Horn. Luca has lived in the titular town of Beacon Pines seemingly his entire life, and when we meet Luca, he's functionally an orphan. The game opens with him visiting the gravesite of his late father, and it isn't long before we learn that his mother has been missing for months. He's now under the care of his gran, who recently moved in as his new guardian, a living situation that he's still adjusting to. And it's the beginning of his summer, although the air carries an unusual chill, and it becomes clear pretty quickly that not all is as it seems in Beacon Pines. When Luca's best friend, the unshakingly loyal, lovable, and boisterous Rolo, tells him that he thinks he saw the abandoned Valentine warehouse glowing on the outskirts of town, the story begins to unfold and it's up to you to define how. And you do that by use of the Chronicle, the central gameplay mechanic in Beacon Pines. At key branching moments of the story, the player will be given the opportunity to fill in a word on the pages of this book using a charm. Charms are essentially collectible words that hold the power to change the game's narrative at your will. It's kind of like story mad libs. When you use a charm in these moments, a branch is created in the chronicle, putting you down an entirely different story path, one that may not be the one you're looking for. Charms can be earned and collected in many different ways, from moments of conversation, to direct story beats, to completely missable and optional moments of player discovery. A big part of the game is going down branches of the story to earn charms that you need to progress in other branches, so you'll be circling back to previous points of the Chronicle often throughout the course of the game in order to achieve this. But don't worry, the game blessedly lets you know when you've exhausted all of the uses of a given charm, so you're never left guessing or running in circles. And while this all may seem like an overwhelming amount of player choice and divergent story possibility at first, as you make your way through, you'll learn that the narrative is actually much more linear than it initially appears. There is a true ending to this tale, a satisfying one and a hard-earned one, but some players may feel like the game's impossible promise of near-unending story branches isn't fully fulfilled. The tree depicted on the Chronicle may have many branches, but they do ultimately lead to one true conclusion, so I I'd encourage you to think of this game more so as a puzzle box, as a winding sequence of mysteries upon mysteries with a reward waiting in the center of it all. And the game itself is admittedly fairly gameplay light, which I know won't be everybody's cup of tea. Luca can walk, jump, talk, and interact with the A button, the B button brings up your charms as well as your current objective, and the X button brings up the chronicle. That's about it. And while there is the very occasional gameplay distraction like fishing or throwing an object at certain points in the story, they're very few and far between. The vast majority of the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is walking around to different areas of Beacon Pines and chatting with people. And because Beacon Pines is a small town, the amount of explorable area in the game is fairly limited, which is something that I actually grew to appreciate as the story went on. I never found myself wanting for a map or anything because the layout of the town is easily readable and I quickly got my bearings. I know how to get to the diner, I know how to get to the treehouse. And this level of quiet familiarity makes it all the more interesting when the game does begin to reveal its layers to you. Helping you along is a narrator voiced beautifully by Kirsten Mize. I hope I'm pronouncing her name right because she deserves special attention for her performance as this disembodied, nameless narrator. 
She is your constant companion in Beacon Pines. She's warm and caring, but she can also be funny and truly frightened, as well as providing facsimiles of character voices, as the characters of Beacon Pines aren't fully voiced themselves. And there's a really small but brilliant piece of audio engineering in the game, a really small design decision that I uniquely appreciate. Uh, Kirsten's breaths between sentences have been left into the audio, into the recording, which gives her performance such a natural feel that it wouldn't have otherwise. Dear reader, forgive me for this interlude. Remember that charm you found in the dandelion patch? There are more of those special charms to discover throughout Beacon Pines. They've been known to reveal themselves to those who are willing. It really helps this feel like a story is being read to you as you're helping write it. And speaking of writing, the writing may actually be the sharpest arrow that Beacon Pines has in its quiver. This is a gripping mystery, very well told, and it'll keep fans of stories like this totally engaged throughout its 5-7 to seven hour runtime. I'm somebody who lives for a good mystery, or a one of these supernatural, kids in peril sorts of stories. And in spite of its painterly aesthetic and the cast of cute animal characters, you might be surprised at how mature Beacon Pines can be. It's never anything too serious, some mild swearing here, some scary or perilous situations there, but it's worth noting that some of its subject matter may be darker than you initially expect. Developer Hiding Spot Games self-describes this game as Winnie the Pooh meets Twin Peaks, and that probably gives you a really solid idea of what you're getting into here. A strength of the game overall is its cast of characters, both major and minor. Uh, like other small-town children in peril stories, such as Stranger Things, or The Goonies, or even something like Night in the Woods, Beacon Pines features a small, intimate cast that's impossible not to fall in love with. Your core trio is combined of the aforementioned Luca and Rolo, as well as Beck, the new kid who just moved into town with her two moms. There's a seedy corporation that's sort of taken over the town, as there always is, and there's a sense of sinister history bubbling under the surface. But even beyond that, you'll grow to know and love minor characters that feel like real fixtures in this world. I found myself drawn to disparate interactions with small characters like Mr. Sinclair, the stubborn old man who naps in his chair near the perennial harvest building, or Miss Hatch, the nice woman that can always be found reading her book in the town square. I really appreciated moments like these where I could just explore the town and get to know its people, a brief respite from the intensity of the mystery at large. This entire game carries the tone of a really good young adult book that you might have borrowed from the library when you were 13, and I'm here for it. I'm also here for the game's aesthetic, which, I mean, one look at it and you can see that it's gorgeous. The character designs are memorable and striking, the painterly artwork and use of color absolutely pops off the screen. And I love how each area of the game is almost shrouded in ethereal clouds, not unlike the dreamy illustrations found on the pages of something like Winnie the Pooh. Without spoiling anything, there are a few scarce moments of dream sequences or flashbacks that I was a bit disappointed weren't fully realized visually, but the game is almost always a total treat to look at. The music is no slouch either, and while I'm not exactly finding myself humming its melodies long after seeing the credits, there are some truly special moments in this game that are punctuated beautifully by its music. And while I was initially concerned with how the Nintendo Switch version of the game would hold up from a technical perspective, I'm happy to report that Beacon Pines is in fine form here, both in docked and in handheld. After a brief initial load, there really aren't any loading screens to speak of from that point on. The game cleverly hides anything going on under the hood with moments of narration during chapter breaks or flips of the storybook page after changing something in the chronicle. At no point do you feel like you're separated or disconnected from this story. Transitioning between areas of Beacon Pines is practically immediate, and I think that's a real saving grace to keep basic traversal from ever feeling too cumbersome. I mean, like a good book, I think it provides a certain pacing that makes the game hard to put down. I finished my first playthrough of the game in just two sittings because I found the world and the mystery so enchanting. 
If you love a great story with a compelling mystery to solve and layers of it to slowly peel away, Beacon Pines should absolutely be on your radar. This is the perfect game to curl up with on an autumn weekend and get lost in like a great book. It may not offer much in the way of moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, but for me, it more than makes up for that with its lovable, relatable characters, the unique nature of the Chronicle, and the immaculate writing and narration throughout. And like all of my favorite stories, I can't wait to hear the way it left its mark on others. Because Beacon Pines is a story about change, and I won't soon forget the people that I met and the mysteries that I uncovered within its pages. So there you have it, my first proper video review for a really special little game. How'd I do? Comment below, let me know uh, if you're planning on playing Beacon Pines for yourself. I would love to hear from you. Uh, huge thanks to the developers, Hiding Spot Games, for providing me early access. Um, I purposefully kept this review uh, spoiler free and intentionally only used footage from the first hour of the game. Um, and speaking of, if you'd like to see more of the game kind of in action and how it runs on the Nintendo Switch, I do have the raw first 30 minutes of the game here on the channel as well. So definitely check that out. And if you want even more Beacon Pines, my co-host Eric and I on our podcast, All In, a Nintendo podcast, uh, we'll be chatting about it in our weekly indie showcase segment that we do every single week on the show. So you can find links to the podcast in every video description. So, um, all right, y'all, that's going to do it for me. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.